What's going on guys and girls, it's Ghost Robo and this feels so, so, so old school. I don't think I've recorded on an iPhone for like four or five years. It's really quite strange. I apologize if the quality is bad, it should be okay. But my camera battery died and I realized I lost my charger somewhere along my recent travels. I gotta be in bed soon, don't have a lot of time, but I wanted to make sure that I got this up today because it's World Mental Health Day and that means a lot to me. Normally I don't partake in these hashtag days. There's always something, National Pancake Day, National Give Your Brother a High Five Day, National Find Your Favorite Teacher from Six Years Ago Day, National Help Out a Bug Day, National Drink Six Glasses of Lemonade. You get my drift. I normally think they're kind of dumb. But mental health is something that's really important and it is something that I want to speak on because it has impacted me and because I think it's, it's best to discuss, it's best to hear from a lot of people. Maybe something I say helps you tap into something that works for you. And maybe something that you hear makes you feel a little more comfortable. And as someone that's dealt with a lot of anxiety and depression, I know how important that comfort can be and providing it even a little bit is really, really meaningful. Um, I was lucky. I, I grew up in a household and in, in an environment where Mental health to me has always felt just like a scrape or a sore throat. It's something that happens and needs to be addressed and you need to deal with it and it means nothing about you. I know a lot of people unfortunately are dealing with mental health stigma and taboo and it's very tough to talk about, it's very tough to admit, it's very, they feel so bad, they feel so low. I luckily was given by my parents the mindset that it's totally okay and it's a natural part of life and it's something you deal with and you treat and you take care of as best you can, but it doesn't change you. And I want you to know that I have dealt with it throughout my YouTube career. It has gone away, come back, taken medicine, been fine, and right now I have a lot of anxiety and it sucks. But I'm still here and I'm still pushing through positively and you can still create whatever kind of life you want with a whole lot of love and a whole lot of laughter. Now, it's frustrating, and we'll get to that in a second, but to recap for you, I had a really bad panic attack early on in my YouTube life, and so it's affected me as long as you guys have known me, and I've talked about it at times, but if you don't remember, I was driving to an airport and had an insane panic attack that lasted for about three hours, at a rest stop, it was awkward, uncomfortable, and I thought I was done for, the most scared I'd been in my life. But obviously I got through, and I got to a point where I wanted to try medication. Not a fan of that normally. I, I eat all organic, I'm very natural, my family is very, um, we try to do things from a natural and holistic approach, but I decided, you know what, this is impacting my, my work, my daily enjoyment, it's striking at moments I cannot predict, I need to do something about it. I would have panic attacks before events. Right when I was about to go on camera, I'd be freaking out, not because of the the the, the fear of the situation, but just this generalized anxiety that would strike because so much of my stuff is not due to outside factors, it's just a weird feeling I get, or it's not sleeping well and it triggers these responses and these panic attacks, this anxiety that was impacting me when I did not want it to. Traveling, alone, with my family, wherever, it was unpredictable, and so I went the medicine route, and it seemed to really help. I had a nice stretch where I didn't deal with anything, and that was great. Then I moved to Los Angeles, and it crept back, and I was frustrated because I knew that, like, it's not gonna kill me, I understand what these are, but they were still happening, the panic attacks. And so I went and got on a different medication, and it helped even more. Now, I'm not saying medication is right for everyone, and obviously you need to consult your doctors and find what's right for you, but I want you to know that you're not a loser and you're not weak for using that. In fact, I would say it's a better first or second resource than a last resort. Why spend tons of time miserable believing that you can beat it when maybe you just need a little boost? And that comes from someone who is very natural, is very holistic, who tries to do everything without the help of traditional medicine. And I'm still saying I think you're not a bum for not being able to beat it because it's not something that you need more strength to beat. It's not something that you need more smarts to beat. I felt that way. I, I'm super smart intellectually and I have a very driven, hungry, persistent personality. And that didn't matter because that's not what was combating 
this issue in my brain, this mental difficulty. So don't feel weak if that is what works and will help you. Um, then I was great. I, I was very glad and so proud that I got off that medicine. And from last July to this July, I really had no anxiety. It was beautiful. I didn't think about it. My favorite thing is when I'm not even aware that I haven't had any panic attacks because it's so out of my mind. And then for a bunch of reasons, it came back around this August and I hate it. It sucks. It really does. It's been a weird, rough year for me um, on YouTube. I felt lost. I felt confused. I felt very unsure just of like who I am, what I'm supposed to be, purpose and plan and passions. You get the drift. It's just been one of those crossroads confusing times. And I think that breeds a lot of overthinking and a lot of anxiety and boom, I'm back in this mode where I get very fearful before travel. And like last night, I woke up in the middle of the night and had a panic attack. And it sucks. Um, it really does. And I want you to know that frustration is, is normal. And it is a bummer because I thought like I beat this twice. And I'm not saying I'm doomed to it for the rest of my life. I still think it is something that can be conquered. But it's important to realize that you're going to have to probably change some things. And like sleep is so important. Quality sleep is so important. That sounds so cliche, but realistically, I try and remind myself that the best thing you can do for your body is consistent sleep. We live in an era when everyone is on their phones up late and they think that they're fine, they can push through. And coincidentally, we also live in an era when depression and anxiety are at all time highs. And I'm not saying that they're a one-to-one -one related, but I definitely believe that if you don't take care of your system, if you don't take care of your body, you are going to pay the price in some fashion. You can always get the video done the next day. You can always hang out the next weekend. You can't recreate missed sleep. And it's something I've struggled with, but this year I've tried to really have more balance. It, it hasn't, it's definitely impacted my career because I used to be a go, go, goer. And I wanna be that again. But I got to a point where I was like, I have to achieve balance and I will be more grateful that I'm taking time to just chill some nights and I'm, putting myself first to eat well and get good sleep and hang out with the people that I love. And maybe I'm not where I wanna be views or dollars or, or progress wise, but life isn't always linear. And I think the more that you realize that taking care of yourself and putting yourself first will inevitably lead to what you want, that abstract mindset is very difficult for me to accept, but I think it's true. You put energy and efforts into your well-being and then you can create the life that you want. Then you can accomplish what you set out to do. It's very hard to be super creative and super successful and super awesome when you're very anxious, very overtired, and very undernourished. Or maybe for you, you have no physical activity or you don't have time with other people or you feel trapped in your, your little office. There are overwhelming feelings like, I'm not gonna get this done it's not gonna be there anymore. What am I gonna do? And I just, a couple hours ago, I had a conversation with someone saying like, I feel so swallowed by all of this. I'm, I'm worried and working on my career. I'm worried and working on my relationships. I'm worried and working on myself. And like I said, just like, what am I doing? And it feels like you need to invest so much time into that in order to just grind through. But I'm learning that sometimes it's not linear. Sometimes it's about caring for yourself so that you have the capacity and the capability to accomplish what you want. And I, I think that's really important to know that it's okay to take care of you and it's okay to put that first. You are the most important thing in the world to you. And that's a weird thing to say, but it's absolutely true. And you're not weak for taking care of yourself and your, your career or your life isn't gonna suck if you take some downtime to prioritize well-being in fact, it might be the thing that leads you to exactly what you want, even though it doesn't seem like a linear way. And, and frankly, I just have like a weaker system. I need more sleep. I need more rest. I need more downtime. That's just how I was built. And it's frustrating because I see some people that are able to push through and push through and push through. And I'm able to for the most part, but it does come back to bite me in the butt. And I've just learned and, and tried to accept like, you know what? Different strokes for different folks. And I'm going to have to take extra good care of me. Some things that I do and that I use to really help, and hopefully maybe one of these will strike a chord with you and be able to be beneficial. Um, I'm speaking mostly on the anxiety end. I have dealt with depression and stuff, but for me it comes across more 
with anxiety and fear and worry and overthinking than it does from sort of the like doom and gloom, can't get out of bed depression. That's not much my experience. Um, but I know how much that sucks. Anyhow, one, deep breathing. Again, it's a cliche thing, but it really does help. The more oxygen you get to your brain, the more you can relax and calm down, the more you can step outside of our Snapchat, internet, online, crazy, go, go, go world, the better. Sometimes I like to walk outside barefoot. Grounding yourself in the grass feels really great. I also like to communicate and share my fears and my worries. And I know a lot of you probably don't feel like you have someone that you can confide in or trust, but I implore you to take a risk and try or find someone that you know loves you and say, this is what I'm dealing with. It is so hard for me and I would appreciate if you could support me. Even if you don't know how, just listen. I feel like for me, processing my fears or my worries or my panic is such a valuable asset because then it it dispels it. It's no longer trapped inside me and it, it definitely lowers the intensity once it's out there, once it's discussed, once I'm reassured. Ask for reassurance, ask for support. Put yourself first and realize you're important enough to, to demand that from other people and hope that they give it to you. And if they don't, maybe find people that will. This one's a silly one, but honestly, it's been a big, huge help. Type shift. It's a word game on iPhone. It's probably on Android as well. It's a phenomenal game, but something about the, the, the colors, the sound effects, the tactile feedback on the touch screen, the difficulty of the puzzles, it's worked wonders for me. It's saved so many panic attacks. I play that for 15 minutes and I kind of, I think my mind forgets that it was freaking out. And that in general is a great resource, right? Finding something that you can put your mind into because once you take it out of this fear modality, so much of that anxiety is just all built up in your head, your, your brain then starts focusing on something else and you start shifting. So staying occupied, staying active, both mentally and physically will help tremendously. I'm not the best at like working out and, and running around anymore, but it's something like I try to, to impart into my life because I know it means so much and I need to do better, especially like a YouTube type life. Like you're just in front of computers and you're sitting there and you're trying to think and you're working and you're talking and you're emailing and you kind of lose sight of the world around you. I went outside my backyard to pick up a bunch of sticks that had fallen from a storm and I realized, hey, this is the first time I've been in my backyard in months. What the heck, that's pretty messed up. I love grinding and I love being driven and motivated and moving fast towards my goals and working hard, but you can't do that if you're not taking care of yourself. And it's a, a lesson I've had to learn and it's one that I still deal with. Obviously right now I'm frustrated. I wish I could just stay up all night and make videos and fall at 76 and burn through Call of Duty and you know I wish I could have grinded through Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I got Scarlet Fever, I had to take care of myself. I got really anxious during that period. I had to take care of myself. And that's okay. At the end of the day, you've got one life. The world moves fast. And it's okay if you're not spinning around constantly. Take a step back. Take care of yourself. And then come back stronger. I think that's a great way to look at it. That I am investing in something that is going to actually make me better when I get back on track, quote unquote. When I get back in a schedule. I also think scheduling and... Predictability is very helpful as well. That helps me a lot. When I know what's coming, when I know what I'm doing, when I have structures to fall into, I'm less prone to wandering mentally. Um, but it's tough. It's tricky. I feel frustrated. I want you to know that someone that on the outside looks to do really cool stuff and gets to travel a lot and play Fallout 76 early and has a lot of fun. I do have a lot of fun. I do get to do a lot of cool things, but I'm frustrated and annoyed that like I'm dealing with anxiety. And it just goes to show you like everybody's dealing with something. It's such a tried and true statement that you don't really know what's going on behind the scenes. And as much as people can flash and flaunt and live it up, you never know. And I'm not saying that it's not great. I think my life is fantastic and great. But I, I get frustrated. I get scared. I get sad. We're all human. We're all vulnerable. And therefore, I think just Investing in yourself and putting time towards that is the takeaway that I, I'd want to leave you with. Um, it's very like easy to be like, mental health, it's so important and blah, blah, blah. And it is. But I wanted to have a one-on-one -on -one talk with you so that you could see that it's something that I've dealt with. It's something that I continue to deal with. It is an ongoing conversation. It is an ongoing search and journey to better take care of myself, to find my balance, and to 
achieve the happiness, the health, the laughter, the love that I want out of that. And then I'm working my butt off on that. And hopefully a few of the things I said either help you or make you see something differently or at least provide comfort that, hey, somebody else is dealing with something similar and they're okay and I'll be okay and it's going to be good. And I'm going to go kick butt on a few more Fallout 76 videos before I go to bed and get a camera charger. But I just want to share that with you. I love you all. If you're dealing with anything, I hope and I pray that it goes away quickly for you or that you find some reprieve via medicine, via support from a friend or a parent, via some techniques that you develop on your own. If you have anything you want to share, definitely leave it in the comments. We can help each other out. And I think at the end of the day, it's just really nice to hear that it's going to be okay. And it really will be. I have felt time and time again like this would never end. And it will. I still believe that. And I know that there is enough great times that dramatically outweigh the scared, the sad, the frustrated. I just got to tweak, retweak a little, and find a balance that helps me be where I want to be. Okay, thanks so much for watching, everybody. Happy World Mental Health Day. It's super important, and I hope that if you're dealing with it or you know someone that's dealing with it, that you're able to provide a little positivity either for yourself or for them because that will go a long way. Until next time, though, drink some hot chocolate. Thanks again. Fantastic day. I love you, and we'll see you all.